Welcome to my tutorial on Elacoustic Sound Vision software. This I'll show you how to design a system design just like this one here. This is a follow up video from my previous How to Measure Room Acoustics following ISO 3382. So first of all, we need to go into SketchUp and get a new file. Here this will bring you up to a new page. I preferably like to work from looking upside down at the area. This is to get a full symmetrical view of the area we want to be doing. This can take a few minutes just to get properly in line, but if you use the Orbit tool, you will get there. And if you use the Pan tool, this can uh, help you move forwards and backwards. So because of our dimensions before, the width of the room was seven meters long. As you can see, it starts to draw a green line down and this knows, makes you know that you're doing a straight line. If you don't get the the meter correct first time, you can type it in the bottom at the right hand corner here and just type in seven meters, which I've done there. So now I want to draw my length of the room, which was 14 meters long. So again, if you just use the pencil tool, this will help you draw a, a line down. If you do something like that, you can right click on the line using the select tool. Select Entity Info and type in the right dimensions here which you want to have. Now we can finish off our box by drawing the lines up again for 7 metres, again with a green line showing us it's correct and red again showing us that it's along the right axis. Now we want to place our box right in the middle of all the axes so that this is very important when it comes to sound vision. So we select all of it and we then choose the move tool to move it into the middle. To get it precisely in the middle, we zoom in to make it easier for us to see. We use the measuring tape to make sure it's 3.5 on each side because the width of the room was 7 metres. As we can see, it's slightly out, so what we do is, again is we use the move tool and we try to move it up a little bit more than it has to do. Because it is quite jumpy, what we can do in the right hand corner is we can type in the exact measurement which we want it to be moved up by, making life a lot easier. Again, check it there. Perfect. Now we will do the same with the length. Make sure that it's seven meters at each side. Again, it's slightly out, so we just do the same process using the select all and use it move tool. And then again, type in the distance in the right hand bottom corner. Double check again with the tape measure to make sure that everything is correct. And now that it's exactly symmetrical and in this position, we can orbit back up to the side view and make sure that that our floor of the hall is correct. Now we can get rid of this wee person because they're just there for measurement reasons. Now we want to design the, the height of the hall. So if we go up to our push and pull button, we then select the area we want to raise and raise it with just raising up. Again, if you want to correct the distance of it going up, click the right hand corner in the bottom and type in your right distance. And there is our basic room. So if we want to, we want to get rid of the roof because it makes it easier for us to see what's going on inside. We can also right click and hide. This means that we can get the, that wall back if we want it so, but we get rid of it so that it's easier to design what's inside first. So we want to design the stage. The stage was roughly two and a half metres out from the room and it was the full length of the room, full width of the room. So they then draw another line back to the sides. Again, the green line showing that we're on the right axis. We then orbit down so that we know that, so that we can design the height of the stage. As you can see, this line we're drawing now is blue so that we know that it's on axis with the blue height line. Again, orbit it round so that we get a better view knowing that we're drawing the right lines to design the right shape. That's the front of our stage built. We then, design the, we then draw the rest of the lines making sure that it's the correct dimensions. That's building our simple design stage. We just orbit it round, now you can see that that is our simple room designed. Because of the hall, it was a very simple room, but you can design so much more. We then click onto extensions, L Acoustics and export to sound vision. 
This allows us to save it as a text file, which you must do so that Sound Vision is able to open it. We'll save this as Hold or System Design. Click Save, and that is our hold designed. We then go to Sound Vision, click the folder with the blue arrow in it, so that this brings up our 3D room data. The Documents folder will pop up, and then we click our whole system design, which we've just made previously. As you can see, the hall has been brought up in, and it's, it's exactly symmetrical, which we did previously in SketchUp. I prefer to work in the loudspeaker designs, design area. This means that it's only the loudspeaker design which is involved in the screen, and it's not confusing you with the architecture of the room. So sound vision is loads of different qualities. We can, we can choose our sound systems. We can see the SPL mapping of it and the delay. Here is all where all our speakers, our loudspeaker systems are from L Acoustics. Here's our sub speakers, our coaxial, and our legacy speakers. These are all the options you get to choose from to design a room. So here I'm going to go with the Kiva 2 enclosures. Because of the design of the room, it is quite small. The Kiva 2 will not be too much of an eyesore and they will produce a nice sound system for the room. So you can move it just with your mouse, the speakers, or we can actually type in exactly where it is you want to place the speaker. So if we move it 10, as you can see, that is 10 metres on the green axis. Again, if we just place it back and we try to put it kind of slightly where we want. And then, this, as you can see, this, the blue is for our meters high. This bit can be slightly trial and error, as this is exactly where you want to have the position of your speaker. For me, I want the speaker just just where the stage finishes so that we can just mount it onto a rigging system. And I'm happy with that where that is. As you can see though, my speaker is facing out the way. So we changed the azimuth to 50 and as you can see, it's now pointing exactly towards the room. We can now see that the SPL is pointed straight to the back of the hall. Eight clo enclosures is far too many for this, this type of hall. So we just put the minus button and this stops the amount that is there. As you can see, the SPL volume has already decreased. For the source cut view, this is where we can actually angle the different, we can choose the angles of different enclosures or we can choose it here. We can choose the exact angle. It just really depends what you prefer to do. Now that we want to have the full, we want to get the room covering as much SPL volume as much as we can. So this bit is all again trial and error until we find the best position for these speakers. So again, the main purpose of our sound system is to allow the best sound coverage possible for the audience at all areas, ensuring that there will be no problem at the level of sound throughout anywhere. So, so far just now I'm quite happy with that what's there. We then go to symmetry here and we mirror to red and blue axis. As you can see, this has created the exact same speaker which has been there previously to the other side, giving the exact same SPL of the room, making more coverage. Again, sometimes this can make you want to change different things. So the site is the angle of the, the speaker. As you can see, me changing it there drastically shows you exactly what site it is changing. So it changes it to face the wall or more to the audience. To add another sub to it, we then click the Kiva and we click onto the SB15N. This is the smaller sub system for these, for the, this is the smaller choice of sub for these two speakers, which is perfect for this design of the room. I would even advise the client that they only used half the speakers on half level because the room is so small. Again, just trial and error, playing about with the angles of which the speakers are at until you don't f think what's best for you. 
a warning overload can happen. It tells you that this means that the system design is not safe. It means that it will not be supported if it was for a line array system. We then click back to our source cut view and we just drag it back up so that the top sub speaker is safe. Then click back to the acoustic section. Again, showing the difference in sight. As you can see, I'm quite happy with that so far. So we click on the SPL mapping to see the full coverage of the SPL throughout the room. As you can see, due to the, the chart on the left-hand side of the page, that is overall very good, with the lowest being 93 dB at the, very at the very front of the stage, which is okay because there won't be very many audience people sitting there anyway. We then again can click our delay mapping to see if there's been any delay within the speakers. And as you can see, it, com it all comes from the common source mode, which means that there is no delay issues. then click back to SPL mapping but cancel it because it can take longer to load. If we want to increase the gain to make the SP the louder we just type in the gain and for the delay if there is delay issues we can then type in our delay in milliseconds here. But because of there was no issues prior to this I'll just change them back to what they were normally. And that is our system design. I'm happy with it not being completely covered at the front because there won't be any audience sitting there so close to the stage. Then click back to our SPL mapping just to see our total coverage. And that's that there. So this here is a previous design done for Clydebank Town Hall. I chose to go with a different design involving both line array system and a stack speaker system for better overall coverage. I went with a CARA system due to the size of the hall being big. I wanted to make sure that the SPL coverage was good enough for this size of hall. The stack speakers had also CARA enclosures at the bottom here with four enclosures on each side and an SP18 subwoofer underneath both speaker systems. Originally for this I had only one line array system but due to the balconies it was producing 105 decibels at these points which was far too loud for any audience. So this gave a better overall coverage using the two different types of speakers and they also chose to use two X8 speakers at the front of the stage to ensure good sound coverage for the first few rows. The top speakers have a slight tilt in both azimuth and sight to make sure that they're covering the top of the balcony. The stack speakers are straight with sight but have a slight tilt in azimuth again to make sure that they're covering the audience area better. This will also reduce delay issues by causing reflections on the wall. So next is a system for Airdrie Town Hall. Both venues are very similar as you can see. As you can see, I've chosen to do a, a line array system involving nine CARA I enclosures at each side with an SB1AI subwoofer on top of each. I've changed the azimuth of the speakers to minus 100 and minus 80 for a more direct angle straight towards the audience. And again, each, angle in, each enclosure has a separate angle to ensure that they're getting the full audience area from balcony to the main audience area listening. As you can see, the SPL coverage is pretty high at the white points on top of the balcony. However, I would advise that the top two speakers are not at full power and it's only a little bit within the, the, and within to the balcony where which end people actually sit, making this not a, such a huge issue. Thank you for watching my video and I hope it gives you a quicker start to both softwares covered. The file shown can be downloaded from my website which we will just see here. Thank you.